In this video, I will discuss some of the case studies that we performed using FMC and advanced focusing techniques. I will introduce the challenges of each inspection configuration, show experimental results, and point out the potential improvements of the new technology. In the first case study, we will evaluate the performance of the TFM technique on hydrogen-induced cracking. This is a common type of damage occurring in wet hydrogen sulfide refinery process environments, even at relatively low temperatures. Hydrogen-induced cracking is a kind of blistering damage that tends to form parallel to the surface. It becomes really damaging when it becomes extensive or when it gives rise to cracking that propagates into a well or when it begins to go stepwise through the wall. The considered specimen is about one and a half inch thick and has strong hydrogen damage around mid wall. The typical blisters connected by stepwise internal cracks. A 10 megahertz linear array probe with 64 elements was used for the examination in direct contact with the specimen. This slide shows the UT images of the damage inside the specimen. On the left side, we see the image from a compound scan technique using L waves ranging from minus 15 to 15 degrees and an aperture of 32 elements. On the right side, we see a TFM frame with 512 by 512 pixels covering the same volume of the specimen. The damage in this specimen is so extensive that standard phase array has no difficulty detecting. Indeed, the different blisters, essentially perpendicular to the ultrasonic beams, are very good reflectors. But the raw sector scan doesn't show the complete detail of the damage. The data from the live TFM inspection provides a more accurate image of the stepwise internal cracks that connect the adjacent hydrogen blisters. In this case, the superior imaging of the TFM technique is obtained by the better focusing capability, but also because the original FMC data recording includes signals from a multitude of insonification angles on the reflectors that compose the damage. High temperature hydrogen attack, or HTHA, is another hydrogen related damage mechanism. This problem concerns steels operating at elevated temperatures above 400 Fahrenheit in hydrogen environments in refinery, petrochemical, and chemical facilities. HDHA is the result of hydrogen dissociating and dissolving in the steel and then reacting with the carbides to form methane, which cannot diffuse out of the steel. The methane accumulates at grain boundaries and eventually leads to the fissures and cracking typical of HDHA. Early stages of HDHA are very difficult to detect because of the small size of the voids, typically smaller than a tenth of a millimeter. The considered specimen contains important HDHA damage at the depth of roughly three inches. The same 10 megahertz linear array probe from our first case study was used. This slide shows the recorded TFM data on the specimen, again with frames of 512 by 512 pixels. We can observe that the high frequency probe, in combination with the TFM focusing, allows to detect reflectors several times smaller than the wavelength. Industry experts consider that the excellent focusing capability of TFM is an important tool for earlier detection and better characterization of HDHA. Still, in view of an efficient and reliable inspection strategy for this damage mechanism, TFM is likely to be combined with other ultrasonic techniques like POFT. With TOPA 64, all required techniques can be implemented on the same portable unit. The next case study will illustrate the flexibility and the performance of TOPA 64 and UltraVision Touch in using live TFM 
for weld inspection. For our trial, we have a carbon steel weld specimen with a wall thickness of 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch. It contains typical manufacturing flaws, lack of fusion, incomplete penetration, a toe crack, and a cluster of porosity. The weld will be inspected with TFM from both sides in a single scanning sequence. Live TFM frames are generated from two 5 MHz 64 element linear arrays on shear wave wedges. When performing shear wave inspection with the weld cap in place, the second half skip is typically used to cover the examination volume. This is why we have selected the TT TT wave mode for generating the TFM frames. The ZTEC weld crawler is used to carry the probes for this one line scanning sequence. But the Topa 64 and the onboard software also integrate smoothly with other encoded and motorized scanning mechanisms. In this case study, only the live TFM frames are recorded. No raw FMC data will be stored. This allows for a scanning speed around 25 millimeters per second, while recording frames every millimeter. This is only slightly slower compared to two-sided standard phase array with similar inspection parameters. The live TFM data file size for this type of weld is around 350 megabytes for a weld length of one meter. This is roughly double the size of the standard phase array. After recording, the UltraVision Touch software can be used to review the data, either on the Topa 64 unit or on a separate computer. Upon loading the data file, we get an overview of the two TFM channels for upstream and downstream. By moving the data cursor along the scan axis, the four manufacturing flaws are clearly detected on the TFM frames. Since each of the TFM data groups includes full volumetric data, we can also use the projection views for efficient analysis of each indication and for flaw characterization and sizing. The recorded TFM data groups have exactly the same format as the results from a volumetric merge operation. It is easy to use the projection gates to isolate and visualize individual flaws, like the near surface toe crack with well-resolved corner and tip signals. We can also observe the capability of the TFM technique to provide better resolution for imaging the cluster of porosity compared to standard phase array. Let's now move on to a case study performed to explore the potential of advanced focusing techniques on thick carbon steel vessel welds, let's say from three inches and up. We know that code compliant phase ray UT and TOFT can provide adequate detection, but the characterization of deeper indications can be sometimes challenging. The considered specimen is a thick carbon steel weld containing real flaws, a rough crack and a cluster of shrinkages located at different depths in the weld. The same 5 MHz linear array probe and shear wave wedge from the previous case study were used. We can see from left to right on this slide TFM and STF images that were reconstructed offline from raw FMC data recorded during scanning of the weld and a standard phase ray sector scan recorded during the same scanning sequence. The standard phase ray channel was focused at a sound path of 50 millimeters. The active aperture is 64 elements for all techniques and adequate resolution was used. We can see that the rough crack at shallow depth is well detected by all techniques, but an important improvement can be observed in the imaging of a cluster of shrinkages around three inches of depth. The standard phase array technique is not adequately focused in this range, so flaw characterization is very challenging. On the other hand, the images generated by the TFM 
and STF algorithms are totally focused over the inspected depth range and provide a high resolution image of the deeper flaw as well. My last case study for today is about inspection of dissimilar metal welds or DM welds. These welds typically join two or more different materials and mostly involve in canal alloys. They are often used to connect internally clad carbon steel vessels to stainless steel piping. The image on this slide shows a typical dissimilar metal weld configuration. Dissimilar metal welds are very challenging configurations for UT examination due to the various propagation issues in austenitic structures, the presence of multiple acoustic interfaces and the sometimes very complex geometry, including conical nozzles and tapers. Around the year 2000, a new damage mechanism called primary water stress corrosion cracking or PWSCC was encountered in nuclear plants all over the world and led to the development of advanced phased array inspection procedures for dissimilar metal welds. ZTEC collaborated with EPRI in 2005 to formally qualify the first phased array procedure for in-service inspection of dissimilar metal welds. Qualified inspection techniques for DM welds are typically based on 1.5 MHz dual 2D matrix array probes, generating L waves for better propagation in the coarse grain austenitic material. The dual transmit receive configuration offers better sensitivity and signal to noise ratio due to the convolution of transmitter and receiver beams and avoids ghost echoes caused by internal wedge reflections. In our case study, we used a dissimilar metal weld practice specimen made available by the EPRI NDE Center in Charlotte. The specimen has a wall thickness of 1.2 inches and it contains a large branched ID surface breaking crack. The qualified techniques have no problem detecting this large flaw, but the objective of our trial was to explore the potential of advanced focusing techniques for improving flaw characterization and sizing. For this purpose, we used a recently designed large aperture DMA probe at 1.5 MHz. Both transmitter and receiver arrays have a 10 by 6 element configuration, and this probe assembly can be driven by the Topaz 64 system. The image on this slide shows the acoustic beam for standard phase array focused near the ID surface and the intended morphology of the branched ID crack. For this laboratory study, we decided to record elementary FMC data together with a standard phase array channel set up according to existing best practice with L wave beams from 35 to 70 degrees. The probe I just discussed was used at full aperture for the two techniques. We will use the Ultravision Classic software to review the data and to perform post-processing of the raw FMC data with different advanced focusing algorithms. So let us first look at the recorded data from the different techniques. Here we see the standard phase array data and when we move the data cursor to the zone of the flaw, it becomes visible on the sectorial scan at the bottom right of the screen and on the A scan signal just above. As I mentioned in previous webinars, the volumetric merge tool facilitates efficient data analysis and flaw evaluation. The merge operation has already been performed in this case, and this is how the merged data from the standard phase array looks like. The corner trap of the large crack is very well detected because the lower angles of the sector scan are typically focused near the ID. The upper part of the crack is visible and can be enhanced by using some soft gain, but the image is incomplete for this very high crack. Like I said, we also recorded elementary FMC A scans 
and in the raw form, the data looks like this. Obviously, these signals cannot be interpreted by the human mind, so processing is required. The advanced calculator in UltraVision Classic has all the tools to facilitate this process. We need to select the TFM Pitch and Catch option in the Probe tab and then go to the TFM tab. Very similar to what we saw in UltraVision Touch, the TFM frame is defined by its horizontal and vertical start and extent and by the pixel count. With this low frequency probe, a 256 by 256 frame will be sufficient to obtain good amplitude fidelity. And now we can hit the process summation button to start the TFM reconstruction algorithm. For better comparison, I will show the merged data from the standard phase array on top of the screen and the processed TFM data at the bottom of the screen. We can see that the image of the corner trap is almost identical, but we now get a complete image of the upper part of the crack. These signals allow to size the crack accurately within less than a millimeter of its actual through wall size. Also, some other facets of the branched crack clearly stand out from the ultrasonic noise. We have also used the STF algorithm to process the same FMC data, this time generating a totally focused sectorial scan from 20 to 80 degree L waves. I will now show this data on top of the screen instead of the standard phase array. And we can see that the results of TFM and STF are very similar. This last case study has shown that the FMC data capture technique can also be applied with dual 2D matrix array probes. Also, we have seen that TFM and STF images reconstructed from elementary A scan signals can provide good ultrasonic data through attenuating materials and have the potential to improve flaw characterization and sizing. From all the information and the various case studies presented today, we can draw the following conclusions. Advanced focusing techniques are a promising additional tool in the phase array UT toolkit. They can improve the resolution of flaw images and increase the inspection coverage with focused beams. Active aperture and frame resolution are key parameters and must be carefully selected to exploit the full potential of the technique. Selection of appropriate probes in terms of frequency and wave mode remains a mandatory requirement for successful inspections. In the framework of regulated inspections, code compliant phase array and TOF techniques can be complemented with TFM for flaw characterization. ZTEX new Topa 64 offers industrially proven phase array UT and TOF, fast, high resolution live TFM, and raw FMC data saving in a single, fully integrated portable unit. This concludes the presentation part of the webinar. We will now take some time to answer a few questions that have been received since the start of our webinar.